Hi, my name is Tom Pfeiffer. I'm a certified fitness and nutrition coach, and this video is a 25-minute mobility flow specifically for men with tight hips. Let's get straight to it. You're going to start by kneeling on your heels and rocking your body weight left and right. This can be really intense for some people, so if you have to, you can lean forward. If this is easy for you, you can lean back. We're going to tuck the toes under and keep rocking just a little bit. I want you to think about keeping your feet active. So digging your big toe into the ground so that it's not just a passive stretch, it's somewhat active as well. Cool. From here, we're gonna go to a half squat or cowboy position. I'm still tucking the back toes under but I'm letting the front knee go over the toes. And you can switch half squat, back toes tucked under, front knee over the toes. I find that most men are particularly tight in the hip flexors. So the first primary stretch is going to be a couch stretch. I get my knee to touch the wall. And then I come up on my other foot. This is going to be very intense on this back hip. And what you want to think about doing is trying to get your shoulders behind your hip. So trying to touch your shoulders to the wall. Now, if this is too intense for some people, as it definitely will be, you don't have to use a wall. You could even just do this on the ground and tuck the hips under or slightly elevate the back foot with a foam roller or a couch or anything else. For our purposes, and for my purposes, I'm gonna use a wall because I have somewhat flexible hip flexors. Although this is, whoo <laughs> this is very tight. <laughs> but, and we're just gonna breathe. One of the most important principles when it comes to stretching is your breath. So you wanna take deep breaths because the tendency is going to be to tighten up and we don't want to tighten up, we want to stay fluid and loose. <sighs> holding roughly a minute. <sighs> if you've been holding it this entire time, you're coming up on a minute. The couch stretch is the number one stretch that fixed my low back pain. If you spend a lot of time seated or sitting, the couch stretch is going to be your best friend. Cool. After about a minute, we're going to switch sides. Same thing. My knee touches the wall. My foot touches the wall. And if you can, your back touches the wall. And then all you focus on is breathing. I remember, so I made this video specifically for men because I remember when I started doing yoga, how incredibly tight I was and how the female instructors would be like, all right, you know, swing like this and swing like that. And I, I just felt misunderstood. I felt like they didn't know what it was like to be so tight. And, you know, I lift a lot of weights. I like lifting weights. And when you lift, when you perform a heavy squat, for example, you really tighten up. And a lot of the positions that they do in yoga are just not necessary or not beneficial for someone who's particularly tight. So that's why I made this video, why I'm making this video is to help you if you are a tight gentleman who likes to lift weights. We've got about five more seconds in this couch stretch. Nice, relax, come on out of that. And now we're just gonna come to a squat. So you can kind of just squat down. And I want you to try to keep it more active. So kind of rotating side to side a little bit. If you're in tight like this, Get your arms on the inside and push your knees out. It might feel like a really good inner thigh stretch. And we're just rocking side to side. Now what you can do is you can take your right hand, grab your left ankle and rotate up towards the sky. Smooth breath. Nice, we're gonna switch sides. So left hand grabs my right ankle and I rotate up towards the sky. Smooth breath. 
And one more time. Right hand grabs my left ankle. Open up. If this is really difficult for you, you could also plant your hand out to the side. Right, that would work as well. Planting the hand, switching sides, rotating. Pretty much everywhere in the world they can perform a squat, but because we live on computers, we lose the ability to fully squat. This is how you should be able to take a poop, <laughs> but most people can't. <laughs> cool, from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a wide stance. So my feet relatively wide, I'm gonna keep my hands on the ground. And now all we're gonna do is go side to side. Now if this is unbearable for you, what I want you to do is just hang out right here. So don't go side to side, don't do anything, just breathe. If you can't touch the ground, you can place your hands on your legs. Even the upper legs is fine. I want you to breathe and relax. We're just gonna stay in this wide-legged position. I'm gonna be flowing slightly, so a little bit side to side. You do whatever feels good for you. But just staying in a wide leg position. And flowing side to side. Cool, wherever you are, bring maybe one leg in a little bit and then to sit down on one side. So this is a Cossack squat. This might be super intense for you. Breathe through the discomfort. See if you can take your foot and point the toes towards the sky. That might really light up your calf or inner thigh. And we're just gonna do some rotations like that. So foot up towards the ceiling, back down to the ground. And with this other leg, I'm really pushing it out wide. I don't wanna be in here. I wanna stretch my inner thighs. And you can gradually at your own pace, flow to the other side. Again, pushing the knee out. And then I'm gonna do some rotations with my foot. Nice, you can go back to that first side. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate. So from here, I'm gonna twist all the way to face forward. I'm gonna drop that back knee down and I'm gonna rotate out and open towards the sky. And then I'm gonna rotate back. I'm going to come to this deep Cossack squat position and then I'm gonna to flow to the other side and rotate. I'm facing forward, I drop the back knee down and rotate up. Again, we're gonna flow through this at your own pace. Do what feels good for you. I'm flowing back to that first side and I'm rotating. You should be able to hear my breath. I'm trying to breathe as deeply as I can as I move. Rotating back to the other side and twisting. Nice. We're gonna revisit our couch stretch. So we're going right back to where we started with the couch stretch. And breathing, we'll be here about one minute. In the couch stretch, there are a few things that we can do. So if this is intense enough, just focus on your breath. But if you want to make it a little bit more intense, really focus on tucking your butt or tilting your hips. Try and squeeze your back glute. And then you can reach up and slightly away from the back leg. That should really intensify this stretch. If you have back pain, the couch stretch is just everything. <laughs> like I remember when I, when I used to work, when I was in school and I worked, I was sitting 13 hours a day and sitting just tightens everything up. The couch stretch is what allowed me personally to extend my hips so that I wasn't feeling everything in my lower back. It's an essential stretch if you're trying to loosen up, cool? 
We're going to switch legs. It's coming down, switching legs in the couch stretch. We're coming up. And again, the same thing. So if I want to intensify it, I'm going to start by tucking my hips under. I'm going to squeeze my back glute. I'm going to reach my hand towards the sky. And then I'm going to lean slightly to the side. I got my knee, my foot, and my back touching the wall. If you just get one thing from this video, it should be this stretch. Two minutes per day of doing this stretch can open up your hips, especially if you're doing things like squatting and deadlifting. You likely are unable to activate your glutes as much as you should because you have overly tight hips. So we'll be here about 10 more seconds. Maybe squeezing that back glute, focusing on your breath. Nice, we're coming on down. Whew. Cool. So now we're gonna go back to our wide legged position. Whether you're up here, down here, all the way down to your shins or even hands on the ground, we're just gonna hold this position. And this is a way that you can strengthen while you stretch because just being able to hold this position without hands is enough to strengthen my inner thighs and my legs in general. So breathing. And now from here, wherever you are, you're just gonna lower down to one side. And then you can rotate the foot up towards the ceiling and down towards the ground. Again, I'm pushing this knee out wide. You can flow to the other side, pushing the knee out, rotating the foot up and down, back to the first side. And now let's rotate all the way. I'm gonna keep my back knee up off the ground as I rotate. And then I'm gonna come right back down and flow to that first, to second side, excuse me. And keep the back knee off the ground as I rotate. And flow at your own pace. Going side to side and rotating, trying to keep your knees off the ground so that it's just my hands and my feet that are touching the mat. This is one of my favorite flows because it really stretches out the inner thighs, which are so tight on so many people. A lot of people think that it's the hamstrings that are super tight, but it's really the adductors, the inner thighs, um, for a lot of people at least, that are overly tight. Cool, just about one more flow, wherever you are, rotating. And then we're gonna come back to that first position, that starting forward position. And I want you to bring that back knee down. Grab a foam roller if you have it nearby. And what I want you to do is try and get your front knee as far over your front leg as you can. And so right now my right butt cheek is touching my right heel. And this is called a split squat, an ATG split squat. The foam roller is here if you need some assistance. What I'm personally going to do is lift up my back knee. If you can, then do that as well. Hold, breathe. If you can't, you can totally keep that back knee down. For the front foot, I want you to avoid collapsing inwards. So really think about trying to get your front knee out and be on the outer part of your front foot. And breathe. This is such a fantastic stretch because we're getting the back hip, but we're also getting the front ankle, two areas that are so tight on most dudes. Cool, we're gonna switch sides. You can kind of just flow or however you can. You're getting to the other side. ATG split squat, the foam roller, if you need it, would be here for support. I'm not gonna use it for right now. And I'm just trying to keep my back knee off the ground. It's totally fine if you wanna keep the back knee down, if you feel a better stretch. But by lifting the back knee off the ground, I'm strengthening in this position. Again, trying to push the front knee out just a little and breathing.
And with stretches, you want to be in the position slightly longer than you want to be. <laughs> so, um, you know, make it uncomfortable. Now, if you can, you want to be upright, but if it's too much, you can lean forward. So leaning forward would make it a little bit easier and less of a stretch on that back, back leg. Nice, you can relax, come on down, chill out. Cool, so that was a lot of hips, hip flexors. Now we're gonna focus on inner and outer thighs. So we can start with outer thighs. We'll get into a pigeon position. And what I want you to think about is rocking your hips left and right. So I'm kind of just moving my hips left and right, using my hands a little bit for support as I rock my hips left and right. If you can, you're gonna come on down to your elbows. Otherwise you would stay where you are. I'm still gonna rock my hips left and right. And now what I want you to do is reach. So reach to one side or the other and keep reaching at your own pace. Investigate, find space, move, breathe. It's okay if you're up here on your hands, till it's rocking your hips, that's fine. At your own pace, we're gonna switch sides. So I'm going to get a pigeon stretch with the other leg, rocking the hips left and right. Yeah, and I think, so I started training mobility, I think in 20, I wanna say 2017 or 2019, I don't remember exactly, but I did a lot of things wrong. And the primary thing I did wrong is I wasn't consistent enough. You can lower down onto your elbows if you can. So I would stretch for like an hour on Saturday, for example. And then the rest of the week, I wouldn't really stretch at all. And that is not good. You are far better off stretching like two minutes per day every single day. So getting a routine where you're stretching, I've found to be far more beneficial and now you can reach one side or the other than uh, long duration. And like trying to make mobility part of your daily routine. For example, when you wait for the train, you can sit in a squat. When you brush your teeth, you can sit in a squat. But just looking for these opportunities, these movement snacks throughout the day. Cool, so that's the outer thighs. Now we're gonna get some inner thighs. So one of my favorite inner thigh stretches is the frog stretch. For the frog stretch, we're gonna get our knees relatively wide. You're going to maintain a little bit of an arch in your lower back. So you don't wanna round, you wanna make sure you're slightly arched. Then you can get your feet a little bit wider if you can. And then finally you would push your hips back. Now, if you did any of those things and you were back rounded, that's no good. Move your knees closer, feet closer, whatever you need to keep a slight arch in your back so that we're stretching the inner thighs and not the back. And now in this position, I like to rock side to side a little bit. Another thing that we can do is you can think about squeezing your inner thighs together. So I'm kind of squeezing the ground between my knees and I'm gonna hold that for about 10 seconds. So I'm squeezing the ground, holding. Squeezing, holding. Squeezing, holding. And now we're gonna do the opposite. So I'm gonna raise my knees out and up off the ground, trying to get a little bit more space, trying to get a little bit lower. Squeezing my glutes, trying to lift my knees up off the ground, holding. Breathing. And one more time, we're gonna squeeze the ground between the knees, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Inner thighs active, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then I'm gonna lift my knees off the ground, trying to engage my butt. Squeeze my glutes, lift my knees up, out, 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 out. Nice. Ooh, we're gonna go back, so that was inner thighs, we're going back to outer thighs. Ooh, with a pigeon. Rocking the hips left and right. If you're already warm like I am, you can come down. You can do reaches. You can do rocks. 
You want to make sure that you're not over stretching. So just going to a point where it feels challenging, but not so much that you're sweating bullets and dying. Cool, you can switch sides. So get a pigeon on the other side. Rocking the hips. Maybe reaching if it feels good. Yeah, and I think the most important thing for a guy with tight hips or just tightness in general is just having patience and being consistent. And I already kind of mentioned that, but um, it makes such a difference if you spend two minutes stretching in the morning and in the evening uh, you can make real progress with just two minutes in the morning and evening. Cool. We're going to go inner thighs. So back to a frog stretch, knees wide. I'm going to squeeze the ground between my knees. And then I'm going to lift my knees out and up. And I'm alternating between squeezing the ground and squeezing out or lifting out and up. You can rock the hips left and right. Always breathing. Smooth and steady. I think for a lot of guys, this is really intense. So just focusing on your breath is gonna be key here. Nice. You can come on out of that slowly. And we're gonna come right back to that couch stretch. And let's see if it's a little bit looser now that we have done some stretching. I think no matter how many times I do a couch stretch, it's always pretty intense, but it does feel a little bit looser for me now. And I'm breathing. The benefits of stretching are innumerable. I can get into a better deadlift position, a better squat position. I have less aches and pains, almost no aches and pains really, um, because I have stretching as a staple of my routine. Cool, with this couch stretch, another thing you could do is rotate or twist one way or the other. And one of the best things you can do in any stretch is just play, have fun, move, try something new, lean into where it's difficult. Make sure that you're not keeping your hips back you're really extending into the discomfort. That's what we wanna do. Just a few more seconds. And at your own pace, you can switch sides. It doesn't really make any sense at your own pace, switch sides, but I guess it does. It's like a kind, gentle way to say, switch when you can. Cool, back to a couch stretch. Squeezing that back glute, maybe doing some twisting or even leaning and always breathing. Ooh feels pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> this is my number one stretch. If I could only do one stretch, this would be it. It's so major for preventing back pain. Cool, we're done with the couch stretching. You can get to a squat. Here's what I recommend whenever you hold a squat. So whether you're brushing your teeth or waiting for the train, let your heels lift off the ground. So if you put your heels down and you feel it in your back, that's a problem. Lift the heels up and keep a nice flat back, straight spine. Then if you want, you can kind of wiggle and get the heels down. But the most important thing is going to be that your spine is not flexed or in a rounded position if possible. And that's pretty much it. That was 25 minutes. If you enjoyed this mobility flow, let me know in the comments below so that I make more of these videos. Um, I can do other videos, things like upper, upper body mobility or something specific. So if you want something specific, let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, like the damn video. Until next time, peace.